For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The grace of God is the gift of God, which is the Holy Ghost, given to us freely without works of the Old Testament law. It's a free will gesture God grants his children and not the others. Titus 3.5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, that being justified by his grace, we should be made his according to the hope of eternal life. So Titus 3, 5 through 7 is a clear cross-reference to Ephesians 2, 8, rightly dividing the difference between justification and the hope of eternal life in the future. For by grace comes first before ye are saved. Justification comes before salvation. Inheritance comes before eternal life. It's not both one thing together, otherwise we'd be in heaven right now. Therefore, Ephesians 2.8 is only referring to justification, a promise, similar to a provisional offer, a deposit, or an insurance policy under God's terms, but not referring to salvation. A lot of devils that believe and tremble, who are illiterate of understanding, think the for by grace in Ephesians 2.8 is referring to salvation, but it's not. It's the gift of the Holy Ghost. In John 4.10, Jesus answered and said unto the Samaritan woman, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. The first time the Gentiles drank of this living water was in Acts 10. Acts 10.45, 10, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Grace is the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is an inheritance, Ephesians 1.11-14. Ephesians 2.9, Not of works, lest any man should boast. The grace of God, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, cannot be received by works because it's freely poured out by God according to his election of grace. Romans 9.11 For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The only reason why a professing Christian refuses to work or believes that no work is required of them post-justification is because they haven't been justified or ordained to eternal life. Wherefore, they were never ordained to receive the promise of the Spirit, therefore were never created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So when you hear contentions like, salvation is by faith, and works don't save us, these are from they which are the children of the flesh, which are not the children of God. The truth is, works do save us, simply not the works of the Old Testament law. Jesus' blood justifies us, then our adherence to follow him and remain faithfully obedient saves us. There is in essence a New Testament law, a spiritual law, which is written in the heart and conscience, Romans 2.15, Hebrews 8.10 and Hebrews 10.16, which we must remain faithful to and obey to be saved. But as stated prior, those who advocate not to work cannot work because they have not been ordained to work according to Ephesians 2.10. The bad news for the devils is there is much work, Philippians 2.12, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Titus 3.8, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, that they do good and they be rich in good works. 1 Timothy 2.10, which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And 1 Timothy 6.12 tells us to fight the good fight of faith. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. 
virtue and to virtue knowledge. Jude 1.3 exhorts us to earnestly contend for the faith. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is solely about the gift of the Holy Ghost and the promise of our salvation in the future to us who are wheat and have been called and not to the tares who are destined for wrath and destruction. For by grace comes first before are ye saved, meaning justification before salvation, in other words, inheritance before eternal life. For by grace, the gift of the Holy Ghost, our insurance, are ye saved, our future salvation through faith, which we are walking with Christ, enduring the faith now.